We got more mail. We're going to open it. This is from Tucker in Washington. He, he has given us a uh, an old Mantel or possibly Crystal Palace inspired uh, iguanodon, and then and then a more modern one. Though he still has the fingers all separated, it's fine. Oh, it's art. And, and a letter? There is a letter. To the team at Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong. Hi, it's Tucker again, and I just wanted to say that when I saw you showing my artwork and reading my letter in episode number six of the Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong mailbag for the first time, I went absolutely bonkers with joy, and all my family and friends were very happy for me. I bet the other fans react the same way whenever you show what they sent you on your videos. So far in 2021, there have been some major paleontological discoveries, uh, like how the, the dire wolf wasn't actually wolves, but instead they were last survivors of an ancient lineage, how Spinosaurus may have stood from the water's edge to catch fish instead of swimming, and the discovery of Zahara Titan... Zah I can't say that. Z Zara Titanus Kingi, I think. There's too many consonants at the start of that word. A new genus of Rabachisaurid sauropod from Uzbekistan. Also, uh, Tucker's parents pronounced the acronym of your dinosaurs are wrong to sound like Yoda or Yo Dog. So there's the. How do you get. Y I guess. Y Yoda. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, that's it for me. I also include more of my artwork along with this letter. Please keep up the good work. Sincerely, Tucker. Well, thank you, Tucker. You have... So this is labeled The Real Godzilla vs. Kong. It's got Gigantopithecus, or maybe it's Gigantopithecus, versus a Spinosaurus. I don't know what the... I guess because Spinosaurus is a, is a semi-aquatic theropod? And Godzilla swims. I that that's probably the the logic here. That's a lot of drawings. We have Borealopelta's last snack, which is plants that have been burned slightly, based on the paper that came out last year. We have a Masiakosaurus with its weird-looking lower jaw. Oh my goodness. We have some manner of hybrid sauropod, combining traits from a variety of animals. I don't... Like, as far as adornments go, I, I guess there's no reason that you couldn't have a sauropod with multiple different kinds of osteoderms or, or elongated spines, but combining traits of macronarians with diplodocids, I'm not so sure about. We've got a megalotragus. I'm not super familiar with mammals. I like the color scheme. Another Spinosaurid, Ichthyovenator. With a little notch in its sail. Is that... I can't remember... I feel like somebody was telling me about that. Specifically notches in sails. Oh, and a Stegosaurus, where all of the all of its plates have eye spots on them. That's a cool idea. Even if it makes it look like it's working for Sauron. He's drawn the oh, he's drawn the the dinosaurs from the Jim Henson dinosaurs show as like actual dinosaurs. I didn't know that they were all supposed to be different species when I watched the show. I feel like if they were all like this and to scale, it would be much funnier. Not that it wasn't funny, but it would be, like, absurd to have, like, the children are one-tenth the size of the parents. Oh, and a pyroraptor with, um, parrot-like, like, macaw parrot-like uh, coloration going on.
and and a, a philosophical piece about whether we should fluff or not fluff the, the Tyrannosaurus. Thank you, Tucker. Next up, this doesn't have a name, we just know it's from Pennsylvania. Is there a letter? There isn't a letter, it's just some artwork. We have some artwork of a Triceratops with upwards curved uh, brow horns. I assume this is based on the idea that as they grew, their horns would retain the shape that they had when they were younger. Uh, it's a pretty extreme example of it though, and it's got a bird sitting on them, which is nice. Thank you, whoever sent that. If, unless we, I don't think we lost the correspondence unless it was in a different envelope. We have a envelope from Alicia in Kansas. Oh, come on. So Alicia has written quite a bit, some of it in the Dinotopian alphabet, which I appreciate, but I don't actually remember how to read it. So I'd have to transcribe it first <laughs> to tell you what it says, but Alicia recently drew a favorite of hers, Pentaceratops, inspired by Sarah, the, tricer the ceratopsid from Land Before Time. Okay. To Alicia, there is no animal more snooty than an okapi. And it turns out the color pattern looks good on a Pentaceratops. I agree. I, I do like that color scheme. The proportions here are really cartoony, but I mean, given the source material, that makes sense. Does not justify calling Okapi snooty, though. I'm just supposed to accept that a priori? <laughs> what makes an Okapi a snooty animal? <laughs> I don't know anything about them other than that they're, like, related to giraffes and camels. Alicia says, this channel is her great valley. Uh, I assume that means a refuge. Thank you. Um, she wants to see if I can guess the color pattern of the Alamosaurus. And there's a clue. It is a subspecies of extinct zebra. Oh, man. So I'm not familiar enough with mammals in general, and specifically extinct zebra, to... to say. That's... that's definitely some manner of brown zebra relative. It must be recently extinct if we know its color pattern. Or maybe we have artwork from humans who lived alongside them? I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on with the head decorations on this Alamosaurus. But thank you very much, Alicia. We have one more correspondence from Tyler in Pennsylvania. Well, that's a lot of sheets of paper. Tyler didn't send me correspondence either, it's just artwork, which I can certainly appreciate. This is Guanji, it's, I, I assume this is based on Valley of the Guanji, the, that old movie with an Allosaurus that comes back to life. Or maybe it was alive all the time? A little unclear. We have a Sarcosuchus Imperator with a pink row of uh, armor on its back, which is cool. We have a Dilophosaurus with a very rad color scheme. I can't, I don't recognize it from anywhere. It might just be a hodgepodge, but if that is a reference to something, I'm afraid it went over my head. Well, thank you very much, Tyler. All right, boxes. Well, boxes and envelopes. Let's start with a 
a bubble mailer. This is from Laura in Alberta, Canada. I think we've gotten stuff from Laura before. Laura, are you the one who sent us a squishy, smelly dinosaur the last time? This one smells similar to the other one, but it's le It's less microwave popcorn-y. Also, it's a Carnotaurus, and I, I kind of adore the... I don't know what the, the like... frog face that they've elected to put on it. <laughs> Just a big round head with short little arms. That's very cute. Oh. And socks. <laughs> No, no letter? No letter. Laura sent us some, some socks with some fossil dinosaurs and some cool dinosaur <laughs> wearing sunglasses and in some neon triangles. Is this one of these like 90s throwbacks I keep hearing about? Because I don't remember owning anything like this. I would have been a, a radder child if I, of course, they're too big for me if I was back in the 90s. Thank you, Laura. We have, uh, oh, this is just from the, this is just drop ship. But there is a note. There is. Uh, these are from Derek. Thought I'd fix your show's lack of prehistoric squamates. Or is it squamates? Uh, so here's a lizard from the Muse River. So that must be the Mosasaurus. Which I'm 87% sure is this one. I should take it out of the bag so you all can see it. Other one depicts a fishy reptile discovered by Derek's dog's namesake. Uh, hope you like it from Derek and Mary Anning the dog. <laughs> Does your dog also discover a lot of fossils? That is a good name for a dog though, Mary Anning. This is clearly an ichthyosaurus. I don't know if that was obvious from calling it a fishy lizard. Very, very dolphin-esque color scheme on this one. Thank you, Derek and Mary Anning, the dog. We have one from... I'm gonna say your name wrong. Lochlan? Lachlan? In uh, British Columbia, Canada. It's some manner of Tyrannosaurid. Since it's from British Columbia, it must be like Albertosaurus or Gorgosaurus, right? Dear Stephen, I really like your show and I hate to see such great manufacturing go to waste on inaccurate toys. You can keep the toy I sent you. I'm really tired of looking at it because it's really bad and it's not an Albertosaurus and make sure to read the label on the bottom from Lachlan. And he has drawn us a Spinosaurus as well. 
I do appreciate the vehemence with which you assure me that this is wrong and is not an Albertosaurus and that you're tired of looking at it. What? It's a Dilophosaurus. Supposedly, this is a Dilophosaurus with tiny little two fingered arms and a clearly Tyrannosaur head with, I don't know, they're like Ceratosaurus looking brow hornlets. I can't believe they, somebody just labeled this based on, well, it's the one with the crests on its head and didn't look into it any further because I cannot believe that someone would set out to sculpt a Dilophosaurus and come up with this. You know what, Lachlan, I'm tired of looking at it too, but thank you. This one is from Ike in California. We have correspondence and oh my. Did this come, this must have come after we shot the episode though. Yeah, I, did. Well, I remember we, this box. We have a couple of Iguanodon. One is pretty good. It's still got its fingers separated, but at least it's portraying the the fourth finger as shorter than the third. And I, I do like the way that they've done the neck, even though we now at least might have evidence that their necks should be a little bit uh, meatier than this. But yeah, this is really nice. I like the beak. You usually don't see the beak at its full extent, even in modern toys. And then this one looks a lot like one of the ones we had in the episode. Yeah, it's exactly like one of them. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Got an enclosure. Hello, your dinosaurs are wrong team. I am Ike and in eighth grade, I've always loved dinosaurs and I always get excited whenever you post a new video. I have included an Iguanodon figure and a sketch of a Uteraptor. Could you please include the Iguan Iguanodon in your upcoming Iguanodon video and critique my Uteraptor sketch so I can make my sketches drawing more accurate in the future? Well, I'm sorry that we didn't get your box before we shot the episode. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Inadvertently. Is Utahraptor drawing? Oh! I mean, you've got the idea, right? It's just a big cuddly bear of a mana raptor. All I can say, maybe the legs are a bit uh scrawny for the for the size of the animal but i don't know i like how much fluff you put on the tail and the neck it it, it makes it look like what it was which is a big cuddly bear are there any teddy bears that are utah raptor that feels like a slam dunk of a product I guess the um, the second toe on this inner foot, it's it's kind of coming out of the leg there or out of the foot bones, whereas the the base of the toe did sit on the ground. It wasn't it wasn't like a dew claw or like a, a iguanodon thumb. But thank you, Ike. This is from your patron, Spinosaurus Egypticus. There's a Spinosaurus supporting us? Yeah. These are from Dorset in the United Kingdom. Oh wow. Okay, so 
Deer, Steve and Liz. Recently we went to the Isle of Wight again and were fossil hunting with a paleontologist, Dr. Steve Sweetman, at Hanover Point, Compton Bay. The photos you see are photos of theropod footprints. They might be from a Baryonyx Aotyrannus or Neovenator or Beckel Spinax. I've never heard of Beckel Spinax. Did I miss? Oh! Wow. That's that's bigger than I was expecting. <laughs> I mean, I should I suppose I should have expected a large footprint since it's a dinosaur, but uh, they'd like us to do an episode on Camptosaurus. I mean, we just did Iguanodon, but Camptosaurus, I feel like we have a toy of. Uh, hope you have a happy new year. Uh, goodbye. Is is one of these toys Camptosaurus? This could be. There's perforation, but it doesn't... Ah! Gotcha. It is a Camptosaurus! Look at his stupid little hands! It's got five-fingered hands, and it's walking on all of the fingers. I don't know why I'm throwing shade at Camptosaurus's hands. I'm not sure about this face, though. Oh, it's because the beak is like the same color as the rest of the flesh. It just looks weird. And a PNSO Stegosaurus. Should I open it? It's a really nice Stegosaurus. I mean, PNSO does good stuff, so I don't know why I'm surprised that it's a nice Stegosaurus. But thank you very much, Spinosaurus Egyptica. <laughs> this one's from a business of some kind, so drop shipped. Or probably from an eBay seller. We have a Pachyrhinosaurid of some kind? Sor Sorine? I'm not sure what the suffix is on these. Oh, it's supposed to be a Pachyrhinosaurus. Okay, that's odd. Is this back when there was that idea that the nasal boss was in fact supporting a series of horns or, or maybe just one big horn? Because uh, I've never seen this many adornments on one. That's pretty impressive. I have to admit, I don't know a ton about Pachyrhinosaurus, but this feels excessive to me. Thank you, whoever sent that. I... Am I sure there's no name? Yeah, there's no name for Rosenthus. And last but not least, this is from someone in Washington. Dear, you're the, <laughs> the stationery they've chosen <laughs> as a as a rather sad-looking dog. Dear, you dinosaurs are wrong. We saw this and thought of you. Not sure if you need another Spinosaurus or what Tyrannosaur that's supposed to be uh, in the other set. Love what you do, Melanie and Taylor. So we've got, can I peel this off without damaging the dog? I can. Yeah. We've got I think this is that same Miragaya that we got a couple of mailbags ago. It looks very similar, just different color scheme. 
less realistic color scheme, I should say. They were clearly fuchsia and bright neon blue. We've got a Triceratops, and we've got what I presume to be a Tyrannosaurus, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. But thank you, Melanie and Taylor. And thank all of you for tuning in for a timely mailbag, or at least partially. And uh, thank you for the, the art and for the toys and for your continued support. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.